TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not. We are live. I'm tweaking. We live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Just a warning screen, just in case. Don't forget, we do got Patreon.com. That's where we watch British movies, British TV series, and Premier League highlights. It's like 2,000 hours of footage on there. So if you want to, just you know, hit the description and try to go look at it, man. Take a little peek, man. You can see what's there. See if it's worth it for you. Um, also, Patreon, I mean, Twitch.com, link's on the bottom of the screen. This is Disturbing. It's been a little while since we watched Disturbing, but I'm here for it. When a killer realizes he's been caught. <laughs> That's not funny. Let me stop. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. This case takes place in the UK in the year 2021. Oh, that's disturbing. That's the man behind the scenes. Meet the King family. David King, the father, Heather King, the mother, and their two sons the eldest Henry King and the youngest Edward King. David King was born in 1967. He has spent nearly four decades in the construction industry. His career has seen him take on roles such as project manager, project director, and even a stint as a senior lecturer at Suffolk College. David is a well-educated man, holding a 2-1 Bachelor of Science degree in product design and manufacturing. Beyond his career, David was dedicated to serving his community and often volunteered as a responder for the NHS. He embodied the archetype of a middle-class father from South England, providing for his family with dedication. David is married to Heather King, the 51-year-old mother of the family who worked as a domestic cleaner. David and Heather met in a pub and the rest was history. They got married in the early 90s. Oh, wait, I ain't wanna do that. David is married to Heather King, the 51-year-old really meet in pubs and live heavily ever after? Old mother of the family who worked as a domestic cleaner. David and Heather met in a pub and the rest was history. They got married in the early 90s and together they raised two sons. Well, apparently not. This is trending towards not happily ever after, but... Henry King, the eldest, was born in the year 2000. And Edward, the youngest, was born in 2003. Edward was described as a hard worker. He juggled two jobs. He would start at 5am in a Tesco supermarket, before heading to his second job as a barman at the local Weatherspoons pub. The goal was to buy his dream car, which was priced at £5,000. The family was incredibly hard working, and by many metrics they were successful. They lived in a half a million pound house in Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. The area is famous for being the birthplace of Sir Robert Peel. A okay, this seems like a, 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 a well-put-together family. Works hard. Prime Minister of the UK, and the man who founded the Metropolitan Police Force, and the Conservative Party. The area is considered to be a lovely place to live, but where there's opulence and ambitious people, there are criminals waiting to take a piece of the pie. Neil Charles was born in 1976, and he lived in Bury. Over the course of his life, he amassed a lengthy criminal record, with more than 66 convictions for theft and burglary. His speciality was breaking into houses and cars. Hey. There are criminals waiting to take a piece of the pie. Neil Charles was born in 1976, and he lived in Bury. Over the course of his life, he amassed a lengthy criminal record, with more than 66 convictions for theft and burglary. His speciality was breaking into how- It's crazy because when I think of a career criminal, this is what I think of. This is the exact, like, hoodie. Bro got a, a hoodie vest on. 
is a sleeveless. That's a shirt underneath. That's crazy. That's, this is a criminal attire. It's criminal that he's wearing this, matter of fact. So him being a criminal makes sense. Okay. Over the course of his life, he amassed a lengthy criminal record with more than 66 convictions for theft and burglary. His speciality was breaking into houses and cars, a skill that caused considerable distress to the community. In 2017, Neil inadvertently triggered a doorbell camera while attempting to break into a home. This crime led to his arrest and a four-year prison sentence for the burglary of three homes. Upon his release in 2021, Neil seemed to be turning a new leaf and was planning his wedding with his partner, Michelle Jackson. However, he soon returned to his criminal activities, and this time, he decided to target the Morton Hall estate. This was where the King family lived. His return to crime unsettled the neighborhood. Residents became worried by the ongoing thefts. Heather King would later recount three separate incidents in 2021, where locals had fallen victim to theft. In response to this, a Facebook group was created for the community to share their experiences. They often uploaded CCTV footage of the perpetrators. Despite their efforts, the police response was minimal, leaving the residents frustrated and feeling helpless. In early of 2021, the King family became a direct victim. So another case of the police not doing enough. Okay. ...of this crime wave. One morning, Heather King awoke to discover that all four of her wheels on her BMW car had been stolen and had been replaced with wooden blocks. The professional nature of the theft and the fact it was committed just meters from their door left Heather deeply shaken. He Bro, how quietly and stealth-like do you have to be to steal four wheels off a car in the middle of the night? Like, that is that not crazy? To know? Nobody heard... No tools or nothing? Heather was left fearing for the safety of her home and her family. In response, David King and his sons installed a security system and began warning their neighbours about the ongoing threat. During this period, the community was on edge and many were angry. While they loved their neighbourhood, the rising crime and the perceived ineffectiveness of the police made them feel incredibly vulnerable. Some residents considered forming a neighborhood patrol, but the effort required was daunting and no one stepped forward to lead. Instead, a WhatsApp group was eventually set up, allowing residents to quickly alert each other to suspicious activity. There were several conversations recorded that works. on that chat that highlighted the anger felt by the residents. David King posted a photograph in the group chat of the character Paul Kersey. The main character and vigilante anti-hero in the 1974 movie Death Wish. He said, this is who we need. For context, the character Paul Kersey, played by Charles Bronson, was once a mild-mannered liberal New York City architect, but he undergoes a dramatic transformation after a brutal home invasion shatters his life. The home invasion left his wife dead and his daughters traumatized by a violent S.A. On a business trip, Paul received a revolver from a client. Upon returning to New York and disillusioned by the police's inability to catch the perpetrators, he takes matters into his own hands. Armed with a revolver, Paul begins patrolling the streets, seeking out and eliminating criminals who cross his path. His illegal action earns him the admiration of the public that views his vigilante justice as heroic. Now, after saying this, this was not seen as a red flag amongst the furious neighbours. However, David King's activities in that group chat and the way he idolised this fictional character did not age well. He also said to his wife, the scum must die when referring to the thieves who were plaguing the neighbourhood. Moreover, his son Edward voiced his own opinions on how thieves should be punished and for an eye advocated for a level of barbarism that this country hasn't witnessed in centuries edward king said car thieves should be shot have their private parts cut off be drowned or choked before being killed i'm sure these bursts of resentment were either overlooked by others Jeez. due to a shared sense of hatred or maybe it was just dismissed as another example of the keyboard warrior phenomenon 
However, these messages reveal a trail of evidence that That's a little bit more than the keyboard warrior. I ain't even gonna lie to you. If I if I seen something like that, they need to be castrated and drowned, I would have hold on now, champ. You really feel that way. That's deep. That's a little bit deeper. Illustrates how the torment they That's like intimate endured gradually altered the king's mindset, ultimately leading them down a path of lawlessness. All of On the night of the 20th of June 2021, at 12.48 a.m., Neil Charles can be seen trying the door handles to homes on a neighbor's CCTV. The neighbors swiftly alerted other residents in the WhatsApp group chat, and at 1.14, David was awake. He had just heard someone try his car door handle, and he replied in the group chat, Snap, just been looking out for him. With adrenaline running high, David was not going to go to sleep anytime soon, and so he stayed awake, waiting for the criminals to come by. At 3.48 a.m., Neil approached the King's family driveway and attempted to open the door of a BMW. When the door remained securely locked, he glanced at a nearby security camera, and in a brazen gesture, Neil offered a thumbs up. By this point, Edward King was also awake and alert. Within just 90 seconds, David and Edward rushed outside the house, ready to confront the situation and their mysterious neighborhood burglar. I ain't gonna lie, if y'all lived in somewhere like Florida, Texas, uh, somewhere in America, this might have flew. Y'all might have got away with it, but the UK, nah, brother, you can't even defend yourself in a street fight out there like you. Yeah. <laughs> The following events are from the King's point of view. Allegedly, David went one way and Edward the other. They both brandished a weapon with the aim to scare and ward off any robbers. Edward was equipped with a 27-inch Japanese-style katana. He had purchased this weapon just a month prior. And David, he had a 19-inch SAS-looking dagger. One might be thinking, why does this nuclear family from the suburbs of the UK have such an assortment of weapons? Well, it appears that David and his son Edward were collectors of such weapons, claiming that they were only replicas for ornamental purposes. Yeah, right. According to documents, they had a range of weapons from films such as Rambo 3 and The Expendables. But some might say that the family had an obsession with weapons as they also had other knives, knuckle dusters, machetes, and shotguns. David King had licenses as the holder of a registered firearm. Nevertheless, according to the Kings, David came upon Neil trying to steal from another person's car. Neil was finally caught. Neil had been traveling with a bicycle, and he threw this bicycle towards David in a bid to hurt him. As the bike came towards David, it hit his hand and the SAS blade he brandished pierced the tire. According to David, Neil apparently continued his frenzy by charging at David, despite him having a blade. In a strange standoff, Neil walked into the knife in David's hand. This resulted in both a gash on his left knee and a 12 centimeter stab wound in his chest. According to David, this was due to Neil's own aggressive actions. After this, Neil staggered and stumbled from door to door shouting for help. He was so distressed as he hammered at a nearby door for help that he smashed the glass. This was the accounts of the King's point of view. At approximately three- That's cap. <laughs> Bro ran into your blade and it hit his knee and hit his chest. Those are two very, very separate, very, very far away places from each other. 3.55 a.m., David King contacted the police reporting that a man had just attempted to steal his car. During this call, he acknowledged that he had been carrying a knife. The police arrived at 4am to find David King in Winsdorf Road near his home, and they noticed Neil close by. Body camera footage was captured at the time the police arrived. Uh, uh, just before one o'clock, yeah. the camera alarm went off. Okay. Uh, and it's already light at 403 in the UK. This would be terrifying. This would be detrimental for my amount of sleep if it was 403 in, in, in Florida 
And the song was out, boy. Um, there was somebody in the drive trying to car doors. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, um, I don't know how long ago it is now, about 10 minutes ago, the alarm went off again. Yeah. So I quickly threw on my clothes, came out and found found a guy uh, trying car doors just here. I'll show you. Okay. He was he was in between those two grey cars there. Right, okay. Trying to car door handle. Yeah. And I shouted at him, you know, um, what what you what you doing? Yeah. I said, I know what you're up to. Yeah. And he and he came towards me um, and said, No, mate, I'm just looking for a light. Got a lighter. Got a lighter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I said, Stay. I said, Stay there. He. This went on a, a minute or so. Yeah. Yeah. He whacked his bike into me, which is how I got that bruise. Okay. So he was like, this was How did it escalate to that? Looking from for, looking for a light. And to him throwing his bike in at you. He whacked his bike into me, which is how I got that bruise. Okay. So he was like, this with the bike, and I, I stood where you are. And, he's, yeah. and he was just going, no, mate, no, mate. And it went like that to right. try and get away. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I had a knife in my hand, and then he ran at me. Okay. Right. And then, and then he held himself he held himself there. Okay. And then he, he argued for a bit, and he, he seemed to be play acting a bit, if I'm honest. Okay. And then ran off. What's what's your name? David King. David, just go and stand over there for me a minute, David. I'm just gonna make a call, alright? I'm not gonna lie, Mr. King. You are not involved. You're you're, a, for all intents and purposes, a law-abiding citizen. But you shouldn't even have told that story to the police. I ain't even gonna hold you. I ain't gonna lie. I would have waited and got a lawyer. Any time a blade touch somebody or some go a firearm or anything like that, I'm waiting for my lawyer. I let my lawyer explain it in the most <laughs> lawyerist terms for you because I, I me saying it, I'm incriminating myself. Based on what's happened, okay, a man has just been around, found around the corner with serious injuries to his chest, okay? Right, okay. And for that reason, I'm going to be arresting you, okay, on suspicion of grievous bodily harm. See what I'm saying? You didn't incriminate yourself. You was never getting out of that once you said that. With intent, Cooked. okay? So, do you mind if I go change? Um, I haven't I'm, got any underpants on the rent. Okay, not at the minute. I'd like to extra clothes if you need to. But we need I've got to... my house keys here. Can I at least uh, just give them to my wife? Keep your hands out your pocket. Okay. Just, oh, hey, come listen, on. Listen, mate, listen. Mate, just hold on a minute. Look, okay, let, let me finish and let me... Man, you're in the great country of England. It's over. Man, it's over. You shouldn't even explain the story. I would have went downtown and just no commented. I don't know what happened. Let me get my lawyer. I would have just said, let me get my lawyer. <coughs> I hope everybody watching these just, just, I don't care if you're defending yourself or not. Just get your lawyer. Don't even get to explain nothing to the police. Can you explain to me what? No, I can. Can I just get my lawyer? Let me just get my, exactly. There's no self of defense allowed in the UK. So just let me get my lawyer at that point. If I'm going to admit to, if I, or I'm going to try to explain that I, he ran into a night and he did that in the third. Now I got to, let me tell my lawyer what happened and have them tell you. Plain thing. Okay. This is quite a serious Any, offense. Because anything I say will, may and will be used against me in the court of law. Against me. A key word, against me. <laughs> Okay, I need you to stay in the clothes that you're in. Okay. For evidential purposes, okay? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but the bit that doesn't make okay. sense is the fact that somebody's tried to Just sleep. let my, no, yeah, my let colleague me finish. finish. Right, okay. Yeah. You are remain on the caution. And you see how they immediately went to getting on that with you. Okay, so I'll repeat that. You, do not, you don't have to say anything, but it may have a defence. If you do not mention, when questioned, something which you may later rely on in court. Yeah. Anything you do, say maybe give an evidence, okay? All of that is cap. That's good cap. Let me get my lawyer and they'll tell you. <laughs> I ain't gonna mention nothing. My lawyer can mention it to you. David, where is the knife? It's at home. Whereabouts? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Whereabouts in the kitchen? On the worktop. On the worktop. Okay, how big is it? It's like a slight steak knife. Hello? Hello, mate. You right? Is it just yourself here? Yes. Okay. Can I come in, please? Uh, do you have a warrant? I don't need a warrant. What? Okay, essentially, an incident has happened. Just take your hands out of your pockets for me, mate. 
an incident that's happened yeah. just around the corner involving a David King. I've just been informed he lives here. Right. And that incident, he's just been arrested for, okay? And for that reason, I need to come in because this potentially is a crime scene. Okay? So for that reason, I'm going to come in. Is that true? Yeah, I can do that. He didn't state no section, do the section, blah, 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 and the blah, blah, blah. It allows me, blah, 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 to come in. I need more than that. What he just said, I need you to state something. <laughs> state what section and what legislation has been passed for you to come in here because we normally would hear that right yeah section 16 da, 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 warrant to come in i need that if you don't let me in okay i could arrest you for obstruct police does that make sense just about okay perfect thank you as you can see david king was initially arrested for grievous bodily harm and the police then went to the King family home to search the property. The home became the centre of the investigation. The police initially discovered David King's knife on a kitchen countertop, bearing traces of his victim's DNA and blood. But they were not prepared for what Talk too much. they were going to find next. The police scoured the home and found the stash of weapons. Officers seized a substantial arsenal of weapons from the house, including knives, knuckle dusters, machetes and shotguns. But not only this, Legal. they found the WhatsApp messages. The vigilante rhetoric in the neighbourhood chat was damning to say the least, but the aggressive nature of the messages sent within the family chat did not paint David nor his son in a good light. The police officers conducting the search also found another knife. Edward King's 27-inch sword and a 19-inch blade was discovered in the airing cupboard. By this point, the police knew that Edward was involved. So, they conducted a quick search and found that Edward was serving a 12-month referral order at the time, a sentence that had been imposed after he held a machete at his former girlfriend. This new development... Oh, he wanted those. <laughs> Bro's one of those, okay. ...led to Edward being arrested on the same charges as his father, with the belief that they both might have been responsible for causing harm to Neil. While the investigation... Imagine going out for a robbery and you get caught and the people that catch you get charged. ...was going on, Neil was in hospital in Cambridge fighting for his life. Two days later, Neil succumbed to his injuries with a oh. stab wound to his chest. He can't imagine. Neil was a thief and a criminal, and one that showed no signs of stopping anytime soon. But many believed that he didn't deserve to die. The father and son were made aware of this from their jail cells, and their charges escalated to murder. The trial would soon begin in Ipswich Crown Court. The trial. I wouldn't be surprised if he got a charge of manslaughter. It took 10 weeks whereby prosecutor Richard which is a severely less sentence than anything else. Kelly described the actions of David and Edward as vigilante behavior the prosecution painted a very clear picture of what happened and used the evidence to persuade the jury of the following events the first story I told was from the point of view of the King family but this is what the prosecution put forward for their case on that night David King had noticed that a robber was on the prowl, and he tried looking for him. But he couldn't, and when he returned home, he and his son remained awake, blades in hand, just waiting for an opportunity to confront the criminal and seek their own form of justice. When the father and son rushed out of the house that night, they both had weapons in their hand. They ran in the direction of Neil together, with the anger that they had harboured for weeks and months. Neil noticed that he was being pursued, and he tried to escape on his... I mean, I guess, yeah, you could put that together from the text messages, though. The text messages is what really got him. Let it know it was premeditated and, and things of that nature. Bike, but Edward had caught up with him. With a single swing, Edward cut a gash in Neil's knee, which followed through to his bike tyre, which then popped... Both DNA and tyre residue was found on the samurai sword. With Neil's means for escape immobilised and his knee gravely wounded, his fate lay within the hands of the father and son duo, 
When David caught up to them, he knew he had the criminal who had been causing all of the torment in the surrounding area, and the man. I ain't gonna lie, in America, if you have that paper trail, all them texts and all of that, that energy, you might not get away with it, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who traumatized his wife. In this moment, he could now become the man the neighborhood needed. The man he idolized. Paul Kersey from the movie Death Wish. With the thought, scum must die, embedded in his psyche, he took his SAS dagger and plunged it five inches into Neil's chest. In a panic, David turned to his son and told him to go home and to tell the police that he was not here with him at the time of the incident. Edward then fled from the scene and David rang the police 38 seconds later. All the while, Neil stumbled away pleading for help. The police would arrive and Neil would soon pass away from his injuries. The prosecutor Richard Kelly stated that the two had discussed death and violence against criminals. However, David's defendant claimed that such statements were his way of blowing off steam. His defense team then continued trying to explain that Neil was on the estate that night for no good reason, and that he was already on the estate for three and a half hours trying to steal before the kings found him. The defense argued that Neil didn't deserve death, but that nobody would be in the courts in this position if it wasn't for his criminality, arguing that David King was not the type of man to take a weapon to the street with the intention of causing serious harm to anyone. And the defense could have argued to pull. He needed a better defense team, I ain't even gonna lie. But the facts remain, he did. And then, Edward's defendant said that he was immature at the time, and that he took the sword to wave around to scare off or ward off any attack on his house or on his vehicles. The father and son- Which I feel like in America, like that's- I got a, a right in America at least to protect my home and my property. Y'all don't have that same right in the UK, it's insane. <laughs> son might not have desired to kill Neil, but they were planning to seriously harm him. And in this case, he did die. However, the kings were steadfast in their story. Like if somebody broke into my house right now, I'm, I'm protecting it with deadly force. I have a daughter, I don't know what your intentions are. Sorry, and they tried to protect Edward from being imprisoned. The two pleaded not guilty to murder and were seeking manslaughter instead. But right. a jury of their peers decided that the pair hunted and killed Neil. The father and son were it's because of the text messages, though. Found guilty if of them text messages and WhatsApp and family text messages wasn't there, they would have got manslaughter. Murder. The judge sentenced David King, who inflicted the final wound, to life in prison with a minimum term of 21 years, meaning that he must serve 21 years before he can be considered for release. The judge then sentenced Edward King, who was just 18 years old at the time of the killing, to life in prison with a minimum term of 19 years. That's the insane. They need a retrial. Hopefully they can get the an appeal. That's too much. That's The UK never ceases to amaze me when it comes to certain things. Like Father what? and son showed no reaction as they were led to their cells. Detec At least they in there together. Detective Chief Inspector Carl Nightingale made the following statement after the sentencing. Today's sentence brings this case to a close. It will bring some element of closure That's to the family after David and Edward were convicted last May. The fa some element of closure to who's fa Neil's family? The thief? The criminal? The traumatizer of women? Alright. Family have said the sentencing is positive, but there are no winners here. The trial proved that the actions of King were not spontaneous. David and Edward King have shown arrogance and contempt throughout. At and if it was spontaneous, they would have definitely got manslaughter, but them Texas is damning. That the paper trail is gonna get you 100% of the time. You can't go do, you can't be on Texas and WhatsApp talking like that, then go. To no point have they shown any hint of genuine remorse or humanity for their actions, convincing themselves. No cap, I wouldn't have shown no remorse either. <laughs>
Y'all got oh that's my that's what I got. That they did not still not sorry. Nothing wrong at all. The vigilante conduct of David and Edward King has destroyed many lives, changed families, and has impacted their own community. End quote. And that it did. Neil's sister, who is a teaching assistant, was devastated by the news of her brother's murder. In an impact statement, she said, Neil was not a nobody. He was an uncle, a son, a brother. When told of her brother's killer's fate, she made it clear that revenge is not a feeling that they share with the defendants. Neil's fiance, Michelle Jackson, added, We had a future together and were looking forward to it. He was loving, kind, caring, and not at all aggressive. What was a thief? As for the King family, the older brother Harry is left feeling that his life is on hold until his brother and father can leave prison. And Heather King still continues to fight and appeal for their release. They gotta appeal that. They gotta get the a great lawyer. Claiming that the two were innocent. She lives day to day, wishing her days away. Not innocent, but like... The, 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 I don't know. That ain't the right charge. That should have been lowered. Something. That's just, that's, that's tough. 